Hey everybody, I'm Bobby Savaggio and I wanted to take a little time today to uh, kind of connect with everybody in these um, difficult times and I feel it's important to still reach out to each other in, in different ways. As, in a, as a musician I can uh, reach out um, and talk about my music. And I thought I would do that a little bit today. And I, I'm going to be very general here. Um, I'm reaching out as much to uh, the non-musician community as I am the musician community. Um, I'm hoping to do some more videos here in the next little bit that get a little deeper into the theory behind some of these things uh, I wanted to discuss today. Um, but that'll be for another time. Uh, today I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, my music and my approach to music um, to give you a little kind of uh, insights into uh, how I do things and uh, with this new um, CD I have out uh, live from the Bop Stop uh, recently released on Dot Time Records um, I thought this would be a great opportunity to talk about a piece of music off of that uh, and uh, a tune I want to discuss is uh, this composition, Times Are Changing. And uh, this is an older tune of mine, um, and I just never really found the, you know, the right um, situation to record this. And with this live CD, and we had been playing this tune a little bit with the quartet, I thought this would be a perfect opportunity and reworked it a little bit and on the record you'll hear it with a, a brass wing quartet that I did some arranging with. Um, but this tune is, uh, though I compose in many different styles and kinds of melodies and harmonies, uh, this would be a very uh, stereotypical approach of mine of how I compose. Um, from a melody standpoint, I'll play it a little bit so you can follow along with the music. And um, this melody is it's pretty simple, um, and mostly di there's some chromaticism in it, but it's mostly diatonic. It kind of centers around um, C major um, and B G major and D major, and so um, when I first wrote this tune, the thing I remember the most uh, is that I had this opening theme. And I, that's all I had. And from there, I just, I, you know, my, my compositional style, although I go back afterwards and theoretically look at what I did so I can understand what I composed, a lot of times if I'm working just from a melody standpoint, so let the melody develop itself. I don't, I don't need to get in the way. The theory doesn't need to get in the way. And so, um, uh, and that's what I did with this. Now, the, that opening theme is really simple. If you get rid of the lower notes, it's just And all that other stuff is just to add color and shape and then rhythm. Uh, and then I repeat that. Um, and then, uh, well, let's look at the harmony too at this point, and then I'll go kind of through the tune real quick. So, although this opening theme is in the key of C major, the tonal center of C major, I don't really think of this tune in C per se, 
but the tonal center here is C. I didn't want to start on C. Instead, I started on F, but it's F, what we call Lydian major, which is actually in the key of C major. And then here's, here's a little bit of functional harmony. Five, one. So a lot of the harmony in this tune is what we call non-functional, where there's no functionality to it. It's not five, one. It's more about color and um, shape than it is about functional movement. But this is an example of A5-1. Um, although I disguise it a little bit with the D in the bass, and then instead of resolving to a C major chord, which I could have, very easily I could have resolved it to that, but I did not want it to sound resolved. It needed to, to sound still unresolved at that point. So it's a C major sus chord, which has a much less settled feeling to it, so that when I go on, now here I restate the melody again, but I move to a different tonal center, B flat in the chord, A minor then to this A flat major, now I'm pretty far away. This next part, now you hear that chord, there's a lot of tension there, and what I was looking for was, even though these two measures are not, you know, grand in the scheme of things, um, I needed to get away from this tonality, and I wanted to cause, in a very abrupt and short and quick way, some tension, and so I did that harmonically and melodically where we get a, we, we start to get away from the diatonic movement of this melody up to this point. See here, now all of a sudden we had some chromaticism. Now we're kind of back to the diatonic quality. My E doesn't work. But see, now we're in a different key, right? With the F sharp, now we're in G major. Instead of resolving it to G major, I resolve it to E flat major, which still causes tension and still has movement to where we're going. Then I take that common tone, that D, and keep it. And even though we were in G major, now it's G Lydian major, which is really D major. We have sharp. Right? Now, this chord, same thing. See, this time, instead of resolving to the sus major, I do resolve just to a major 7 chord because here, finally, at the end of the melody, I want it to have a more resolved quality to it, even though it's not resolved in a traditional way where we resolve to a very specific key that the whole tune has been in. It's resolved from a melodic standpoint and a harmonic standpoint. Um, and then up a minor third to the... Uh, 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 for the tune to start over again. And that's harmonically and melodically how I approach this tune. As an improviser, you know, we think of this as more of a modal improvisational style versus a chordal. In, in, in chordal improvisation, if you listen to Charlie Parker, jazz musicians that outline chord changes, um, there's a certain way that they play where they're outlining certain sounds. If I'm playing what we call a 2-5-1, um, it sounds a certain way. And to play that way over this just doesn't make stylistic sense. And it doesn't make musical sense. And so we, we have to play differently over a tune like this. And instead we look at the modes of the chords. And we look at all of the notes within the modes. And we create shape as opposed to line. Like bebop, we create shape. 
and we take those shapes and, and develop those shapes. And a lot of times, for me, and a lot of the, the uh, musicians I admire and listen to, a lot of those shapes come from the melody of the tune. I mean, you have this... This idea of, of intervallic movement and scale movement that I can develop and develop different ways. If I go to the E minor chord, um, if I go to the B minor chord, the um, sixth measure of the tune. You know, and so over any of these modes, I can take this general idea and develop that. Uh, and then the idea is to be able to move through the modes with that. Um, if I take that sixth measure, the B minor to the B flat major, A minor, A flat major. I can take those general ideas and I'm not just randomly playing anything, I'm taking themes from the melody and moving them through the modes. And that's a very general way of looking at improvising. I can do that with any of these. Uh, that C7 flat 9 chord. If I take that shape, I can play that shape over the B minor chord. Over that, that D minor. I, and I can do that uh, um, throughout the whole improvisation, is take these shapes and sounds from this and improvise in a way that has a melodic quality to it and a cohesive quality to it that makes stylistic sense. And um, when you listen to this tune, and I'll provide a link to uh, a video I have of, of this composition from the live recording. Um, you can listen to it and you'll hear all of us playing in a way where we're using the structures of this melody, the structures of the harmony. And so what I want to end with here with you as my heater turns on down here is, um, you know, thank you for joining me here today. Um, Again, I'm going to try to do some more videos and get a little deeper into the theory behind some of these ideas here, uh, play a little bit more, give you some graphics that show you a little bit more, again, from a deeper standpoint, what I'm talking about for my musician colleagues out there. And, um, you know... Um, this record, it, I'm, I'm very proud of this record. The, the musicians played beautiful on it. I, I, these are all musicians that I've known for years and, and um, have a deep connection with, and I think you hear that on this record. Um, you can find this CD uh, at dottimerecords.com. You can go to my website, which is just bobbysalvaggio.com, or you can download it from any... Uh, you know, platform you can find online, um, Amazon and anything else you can think of. So, uh, thanks again. I hope everybody stays safe and well, and I hope to see you all soon.